All right, let's look at problem number 75. In problem 75, I want to find the local maxima and minima of the function f of x is equal to e to the x times x minus 7 using the second derivative test. Now, we've used the first derivative test in past problems, but in this problem, I want to use the second derivative test, and that one works just slightly different. In the second derivative test, what we're trying to find, we're tr still trying to find uh, where the local maxima and the local minima of the function are, but we go about it in just a slightly different way. Uh, the way that we're going to go about it is we're going to first identify the critical points of the function in the normal way. And the way that you find critical points of a function is you take the first derivative, set it equal to zero, solve for x or find where it's undefined, and you get your critical points. So that's what we're going to do first. After we find our critical points, we're going to then take those critical points and plug them into the second derivative. Okay, we plug them in, and then depending on if we get a positive number or a negative number, we'll know whether or not we have an absolute maximum, or I'm sorry, a local maximum or a local minimum. So let's do it. First, let's take the derivative of our function and find our critical points. So we find f prime of x, and the derivative of this function is the first guy, e to the x, times the derivative of the second, which is 1, plus the second, x minus 7, times the derivative of the first, which is e to the x. OK, so this is what we get. Um, I could factor that because I could factor out an e to the x. If I do, I get e to the x times 1 plus x minus 7. Or if you prefer, I get f prime of x is equal to e to the x times, let's see, 1 plus, I get an x, uh, and then minus 7 plus 1 is minus 6. So I get e to the x times x minus 6. Okay, what are the critical values here? Well, that's where this thing would be undefined, which is nowhere in this case because there's no denominator, or equal to 0. Well, e to the x, if you're familiar with the function e to the x, it's never 0. So this guy's never going to be 0. So this one must be the one that's 0. So x minus 6 would have to be 0, or x would have to be equal to 6. Uh, that is my critical point. So my critical point in this case is x is equal to 6, because 6 would make the first derivative 0. All right, now that I know my critical point, and maybe in some problems that you encounter, you'll have more than one critical point, I'm going to take those critical points and plug them into not the first derivative, which I have right here, but the second derivative. So I need to take another derivative at this point. So here's my first derivative. Let's find the second derivative. f double prime of x would be, again, I have to use the product rule. It's the first guy, e to the x times the derivative of the second guy, which is 1, plus the second guy, which is x minus 6, times the derivative of the first guy, which is e to the x. OK, let's simplify just a little bit. I get f double prime of x is equal to, if I wanted to, I could factor out that e to the x again. And I get e to the x times 1 plus x minus 6. If, I, if you prefer, this is f double prime of x is equal to e to the x times 1 time, uh, plus negative 6 is negative 5, so this is x minus 5. And now, all that I need to do is plug in 6. So what's uh, f double prime of 6? Well, it's e to the 6th times 6 minus 5 which of course is 1. So I just get that f double prime of 6 is e to the 6th. Now, e to the 6th is a positive number, right? And if it's a positive number, it tells me whether or not this critical 
uh, value I'm getting, this critical point, is it a local max or is it a local min? And what I know is if it's positive, it's a local minimum. If it's negative, it's a local maximum. And sometimes that doesn't make a whole lot of sense because you kind of think, hey, if it's positive, it should be a maximum. No. And, and the reason why is, what does this really tell me? The second derivative tells me about the concavity. And what this second derivative is telling me is that the concavity of this thing is actually positive. If I have something that has positive concavity, then it kind of looks like this. And if I have something that kind of looks like this, would I expect there to be a local maximum or would I expect there to be a local minimum? It's pretty clear that I would expect there to be a local minimum. And that is correct. So since the second derivative gives me a positive value, I know that this critical point produces a local minimum. So f, the function f, has a local minimum at x is equal to 6.